Hello and welcome to the Indie Spring Podcast. I'm your host, Kay, also known as Indie Spring on Ravelry, Facebook, Instagram, Gmail, and put it. Um, I feel like you really into technology and do, you know, all the, the quitters. But I think part of me is about 50 years old and I just don't want to be that connected. That's horrible. Part of me thinks that's pretty horrible, like I should really want to be connected all the time, but I just don't think that's me. So, anyways, come check me out. Um, I am on those quite often. I tend to be very quiet. I'm more of like a work, work, worker, worker, more of a worker. So, um, but I'm happy to chat and talk to anybody anytime. And so let's start this podcast off. Um... So I think we should start with a little bit of an apology. Over the last year, this podcast has been, well, maybe since its infancy, it's been sporadic. And I want to thank everybody who has continued to watch me and have kind words for me. I went through a difficult personal thing. Um, it's a long story that's not very interesting and it has no peak, you know, it's not like a single day, a single thing happened to me um, that sent everything in motion. Uh, I really underestimated some events that happened in my life uh, over the past about three years or so, and they kind of all just caught up with me. And I think sometimes as an adult, we, or I try, to just keep on moving forward, you know. So like that, um, there's a little kid cartoon that's like, just keep going, just keep going. And a lot of times, I mean, that's my mantra, is you can't go backwards. You can't change things. You can only go forward. So I've got to keep on going. And, you know, I'm not just responsible for myself. I have a family, a husband, a child, I have a job, a friend, a family. And sometimes you need to stop. And that's what I did. I just stopped. And through stopping, I kind of realized several things about myself. Things that I like and things that I don't. But, you know, you can always change the things you don't. But I would have to say that I have realized, or it's been pointed out to me, I should say, that I'm an insanely private person. Not private into, like, hey, Kayla, what'd you do today? I'll talk to you all day about that. But private about what's really going on up there and what's really in my heart. Super private person. I, I don't really share that stuff. I mean, I do with my husband a little bit. But that's about it. And so I think inadvertently it hurts some people's feelings, and I want to publicly apologize. I think um, I think this year was the year that, for me personally, I just I needed and had to put my family and myself first. And by doing that, I inadvertently hurt a lot of people's feelings. So I apologize. Um, basically, what I'm all getting to is I'm apologizing publicly to everybody that I hurt or disappointed or I didn't follow through on things. Um, I made promises that I didn't keep. I wouldn't even call them promises. I just said I was going to do things that I never did. Um, and there was avoidance uh, and just complete anarchy at some point, right? But you'll be happy to hear, at least I'm happy to hear, maybe no one else is happy to hear, but I'm happy to hear it, that um, I don't know if I'm through it, right? Who knows? Um, but I, I quit resting, and I started to move forward again. And so part of me moving forward is doing things that I enjoy. I enjoy podcasting. I love you guys. So I'm going to try to be back, but with no no promises. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to record and to be here and to share my knitting life with you. So I haven't been knitting a lot, especially in like the last six months. I wouldn't say the urge has gone away from me, but my priorities shifted during that time, I guess. Um, I spent a lot of time reading, being with friends, and kind of just figuring out where I wanted to go. But now that I'm up and moving, I started uh, knitting again, and my normal knitting again, you know, where you're not just like knitting around at night, uh, really sitting down and knitting for 30 minutes or an hour. And I'm always amazed at the people that say, hey, I knit four hours a night. I'm like, seriously? How do you have that much time? I do not have that much time. Four hours a night? Seriously, be up to two o'clock in the morning. You're crazy people, and I am envious. I'm totally jealous. And it's totally not a negative. It's just that I wish I could do that, and I can't. But at this point, right now, other than having a little, you know, minor jealousy over people's knitting time, is um, I'm doing great. Really happy. Really happy. Um, happy to have been. Maybe ever. God's great. Friends are great. My marriage is great. My kid is great. I did get hit in the face with a book today. She got like a monster black eye. Not right now. So she almost got a black eye a few weeks ago because of another incident where she fell off the slide and hit her nose at school. And everybody thought, we all thought she was going to have a black eye. And so we're telling her, you know, you're going to have a black eye, but it's going to be okay. And she we never explained it. We just kept on saying it. So my daughter is seven. And she was like, I don't want a black eye. I don't want my eyes to turn black. She thought, like, the entire, like, eyeball was going to turn black. She was terrified. And then I felt awful. Like, I'm so scared. Like, I terrified my child. But, anyways, now she understands. And so we told her, and so we showed her pictures and explained what a black eye was. And she's all cool. So that was a few weeks ago. So this tonight is already forming. Like, it's this huge black eye because a kid got mad at her. She got mad at the kid. And the kid whipped his book at her. And the corner of his book hit her right in the eye, right below, like right here. I got my glasses on. I can't really see now, but it, it like right here it hit her. It was already turning black and blue. And I don't want a black eye. I, I, I do not want a black eye. And she's looking so concerned. And I'm like, well, we talked about this, you know, your eye's not going to turn black. And she, I'm like, just around your eye. It's like, but it'll never go away. <laughs> and I think it's great. I was like, Away. And then she's like, oh, okay, whatever. I was like, don't I have it for a few days, dude? But I know it's a random chatter. And um, in spirits of moving forward and doing what I like, um, I usually saved all my chatter for the end. Uh, there's a lot of people that hate podcasts that in the beginning. You basically chit-chat. They want to see the knitting. And then at the end, if they want to not hear about your life, they do. Which do totally get it. However, I don't. I didn't really enjoy it. By the time I got to the end of the podcast, like after all the knitting, I, I wanted to be done. I was done talking, and then I would just sit there and think, "Gosh, what happened? What can I talk about?" What you know? I mean, I view my life pretty much as boring. Like my life is not interesting. I wake up at 6.30 in the morning, I take a shower, I get ready, I get my kid up, we get, go to the bus, she gets on the bus and goes to school, I go to work, I come home, I make dinner, we do homework, I clean it up, she takes a bath, I get her ready for bed, I read her story, she gets in bed, I go downstairs, I usually clean up a little bit and then watch one show with my husband and go to bed. I mean, like, seriously, it is an American boring dream. I love it. I love it. Not complaining. I love it. Um, but... So when I get to the end, I'm just, I don't know. I just never know anything to say. So we're going to try to do it in the beginning, and hopefully my chatter will be a little bit better. You know, bear with me. But like you've always done. If you have stuck around this long, you've already bared with me quite a bit. And I thank you for that. Thank you. Okay. So I haven't been doing very much. However, I have been knitting. So, 
we're going to do, what do we want to do first? We're going to do a little stainless self promote it. Ten people leave it at the end. And the whole time, the whole film, I'm just agonizing over, you know, if I should say something, what I should say. I really, I really hate putting myself out there most places. I mean, I like to talk about myself and talk about my knit or knitting, but like Indie Spring itself, it's like a huge push to me to put myself out there and try to do something. And um, I hate failure. Hate it. Oh, God. I hate it. I avoid it. Oh. Anything I can do to avoid failure. I mean, I'm an overachiever because I hate failure so much. It's not because I really love achieving. Like, I get a sense of accomplishment and fulfills me. And some people, like, they achieve and they get this, you know, euphoric high. No, no. It's all an avoidance of failure. So I hate feeling like a failure. Who likes feeling like a failure? So instead, I just choose the path of avoidance, which is half my problem in life. I guess if I have, like, a total flaw, it, it totally is avoided. And um, I'm okay with it. I mean, i got to get better at it, you know. Uh, and, and I will. Uh, but so we're going to try to do a little chatter, then a little seamless self-promotion, and then we'll get into the really good stuff, which is what I've been cranking up. So, my mom. Mama! Yes! Yesterday? No. Like last week, sent me um, some awesome yarn, which is Indie String. Imagine that. She sent me Indie String. So the yarn is dyed in Michigan by my parents. Um, in the beginning, I did all the dye recipes, but now uh, my mom has done several of them. She's done a really good job. Super good job. Uh, so we had some... Um, quality issues with this stain. It, um, it's a tiny, like, it's like a dab of a rough spot on it from some of our equipment that this is the first and only stain it ever happened with and we, we removed that equipment and um, are doing a different technique to eliminate that possibility in the future. But anyways, this is the color River Mist. And it's a real shame because it's looking very blue. Like, it's looking sky blue. And it, it's like a turquoise, like a really light, beautiful turquoise, turquoise blue almost. This is just my mom's favorite color. So that's no, that's no shocking. It's a semi-solid for sure, uh, but very subtle semi-solid. It really actually, I do really like it. Let's open her up. And so this is available on the site right now. The other pins that had no issues. Um... And so, let's see. So, a great solid. By the way, um, that thing right there wasn't a knot, it's just a thing. I really, really don't like knitting on a thing of yarn and getting a knot. I know industry standard is to ring that person. I know. I hate it. I really, really dislike it. And there are some dyers that regularly have knots. Now, one knot, I don't really mind. Like, I've had scenes where I have two and three knots, which is industry standard, but it's annoying. Like, I lose that yardage. Because I can't knit the knot in. So I'm losing yardage every time, and it's a pain. It means I have more ends to weave in. It means that I have to finagle it, basically. So we really try as hard as possible at any string when we're winding yarn, which is my dad. And if you guys knew my dad, you'd know my dad. Yeah, there, there's going to be no knots that, were, that he was able to catch. So um, we have a lot of seconds, which maybe we'll do something with eventually. But right now... We're still dying full, full steam, um, 100 grams, 200 plus yards of a worsted weight, three ply, uh, with no nuts. Think about it that, man. For me, that that's like what I look for. I look for a dyer that, you know, takes the time for quality and takes the time for customer service. In the knitting world, everybody knows each other, and it's so great. It's such a community. 
So I raised the belief that we we treat everybody and we do everything um, like we would do ourselves. It's what I do myself. So this is, um, and she just sent me a scan. I believe it's a beach ball. Um, so this is that. It doesn't have a tag on it. There's two that are really, really similar in color. Um, but anyways, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them and the, the variegated colorway has quite a bit of like a turquoise in it. And so with the turquoise base blue, I'm going to do some kind of striking project. And fair warning, I can hear my kid right now, so who knows? Might be interrupted. All right, so let's get into the knitting pool. I have no idea what I showed you guys last. So I pulled a whole bunch of things, and if I showed you it before, I'm sorry. Gonna see it again, right? Okay. So I mostly did this pattern for my dog, which is basically like a long sweater. She's seven, and it probably will hit her right around mid-thigh, I think, which is right where I wanted it. Um, it's starting to get colder here, so I'm excited that I can finish this up and leave it in the end. It has been blocked, and the front and the back are very similar. The only difference in the front and the back are the pockets. This is what I'll have to say about this pattern. The only thing that I really, I really will change, I would change if I ever knit this again. And I might. It's an easy pattern. It's good. I think it's super, super cute. Um, the pocket placement does not change dependent on the size. It's always the same. So I knit a pretty big size. I knit like a 10, I think. And the placement of the pocket is quite close to the in the center. Okay. I probably would have moved them over both about five stitches to make them more equal inside the front itself and make the whole thing look more balanced. It's not a big deal. A kid is never going to notice. So what I showed you this last time, I had the body done, but I hadn't done the pockets. And these are the first pockets that I've ever attempted. I'm not going to say they were successful. I hate several things about them, but they're for my seven-year-old, and hey, it's the first pocket. Only can get better with the next one, right? So I did knit the pockets, but I haven't interior them. Then I wanted to show you guys my pockets I made. So if you want to look here, that is um, hand spun pigeon roots. Studios and it's a superwash merino, merino silk blend. Sorry, something was buzzing. Um, and I thought the color scheme of it went really well with this PC brownie pink color. And the main color and yarn of this is a Madeline Tosh vintage. So I bought. The Madeline Tosh Vintage. I think when I was pregnant. So eight years ago. To knit something for my daughter. Hey, eight years later. Still good. What's a great thing about yarn. It doesn't expire. Okay. So. The next thing I've knitted on lately. This is the stuff that I've knitted on probably in the last few weeks. So during last year, no, right? God, I get better. And I think my scattered knitting is really like a reflection of myself. At a certain time of my life, when I started knitting, or I was about first six years, single project diva. Man, I pick up something, I finish it, I block it, weave in the end, and as it was blocking, I would start my next project. And as things happened in my life and I became stressed out and broken down, and I want to, I do want to clarify, 
no one in my life currently, no one who I love, none of my family um, were the cause of my problem. So, everything is good now. And it was just, and I, I wasn't abused. I just had a very stressful situation um, that I internalized incorrectly. So, anywho, my daughter was in T-ball. And so, um, I went to all the games, but my husband did all the practices. And so, when I was at the games, which were every, there were two a weekend, uh, every Saturday and Sunday, I was sitting next. And I wanted something really, really portable, so I chose this hat pattern. And this is by Vera Velamaki. Um, I picked it for a few reasons. So I think this hat pattern only has had like three, maybe less than ten, I think, projects done on Ravelry. So I really wanted to make something that was a little bit different. And since I'm sitting so long and... I can concentrate. I picked this nice table pattern and it will stretch. I really like this rim detail here with the, the cap tabling here that transitions to the large table. So I put this down after um, I reached the required height for the slouchiness of the hat because the instructions for the decreases are table decreases and I've never done them. I think that's a little bit of a theme, right? I've never done that. So, I picked this up, now, you know, not that long ago, I mean, a few days ago, and I'm going to try to finish this for Christmas for somebody. It's so close, I just have the pieces left. I think I have, like, 20 more rows. Not bad. So, hopefully this is going to be finished the next time I see you guys. Only thing is, is that, for me, the, the table decreases do take a ton of concentration. Like, one of them isn't so bad, like, I can't remember if the la left planting or the right planting decrease, not so bad, do it my sleep, super quick, but the other one is like, and I think because I'm trying to do it without a cable needle, but it's almost impossible, even though I'm only moving one or two stitches, you have to move it twice, if you're using it without a cable needle, so it's taking me forever, but it'll get done like anything else, and it'll be a good Christmas present. So this circumference of the hat, they only gave one size of hat and one circumference, which was 19 um, centimeters, no, 19 inches, centimeters, 19 inches around, which is the circumference of my head. However, this hat is tight on my head. So um, that also kind of weighed me off. So I'm like, who the heck am I going to give it to if it's tight on my head? I'm hoping with blocking it will relax a little bit and um, it can maybe flex like another inch or two and that would be really great so it would fit most adults. Um, or I'm just going to have to try to find somebody with a teeny tiny head. So this is um, a hat for Christmas and it's being knit out of leftovers, which is the best, right? Uh, those are becoming arts in a synagogue sport, which is 80% um, merino, 20 no, 70% merino, 20% cashmere, 10% nylon, and it's in the driftwood colorway. And I actually um, bought this off of a Ravelry er. I don't remember um, their username to finish a huge shawl that I had that I ran out. So I only used like 20 yards of this chain, so I decided that I would pick it up and try to knit something else. So, it came in half. How are we doing? We're at 24 minutes. Goodness gracious. I'm going to try to keep my podcast from now on under a half an hour. It's really, really hard when I go over um, to uh, get it compressed and online. Uh, I don't know what it is, but there's like this magic... Whenever I go over 30, it takes me twice as long, and I, I don't know why. So I'm going to try to keep it under, and it's better for you, better for me. Right. So the last thing that I have been knitting on is uh, a sweater. And this sweater is for me. And uh, that's the front. So I think it's called, it's called the jeans. I really don't know. 
Um, but I'm going to talk a little bit while I try to find it and tell you the name of it. So I bought this pattern about, I can tell you, a few years ago. And I have been trying to convince myself that if I bought the pattern, I should really, really try to knit it. I am a total, total sucker for a sale. I think I get that from my mom. And unfortunately, it means that I've bought quite a few patterns that were on sale and I never knit them. So I wanted something simple. I, um, unlike a lot of other people, I love stocking it. Stocking it in the round is my, is my mantra, dude. So relaxing. I don't have to watch it. I can have a conversation. I can watch TV. And it's like I zen out. I'm stocking it in the round. I love it. I really do love it. So I was looking for some stocking it in the round. And it seems as though I went through this whole phase with the peak sweater selection. And I have not finished one of them. I started. And I've started three of them. So I have three unfinished sweaters sitting there. Mostly knit. All they have to do is to have the finishing. And I'm terrified that I'm going to screw them up. So, of course, failure is never an option. So avoidance is key. And I went ahead. Oh, goodness gracious. Hold on. My computer. Okay, sorry. I wanted to restart. I'm going to stop that action. So I looked for something, and I looked in my pay patterns, and it's this sweater, which is the James. And I think it's by, is that Amy Miller? Yes, by Amy Miller. And I had this yarn for, I don't know, at least five years. So this is Madeline Tosh Sport. This is a merino blend. Um, and a few good things about this is knitting around. Good for me. It means I might actually finish it. The second thing for it is that it's a scoop neck, which is um, a key five uh, short row shaping, and I haven't done that before, and I, I really like it. I like scoop necks on me or v-necks much better than boat necks. Um, so this is going to be great, and I can wear this to work. So I'm trying to make it um, and knit things that I can uh, use every single day. The only thing about this sweater is that it's a little short. Most of my sweaters that I knit are about 18 inches long, which um, go past my hips. Uh, my hip on uh, my body is the widest part of me, so I try to knit something that's longer, um, so it basically streamlines that and it makes it disappear. This ends exactly at my hip, which is the widest part of me. So why am I knitting it and not planning on knitting it longer? And the reason why is that that photo is a little bit misconceiving when you're looking at her straight on. The actual um, schematic is that it's almost like an A-line. It goes out, this sweater. You're consistently um, after the bust increasing to get a very nice A-line. And so that's really great, but that's a lot of volume on my bottom half, which is not my smaller half. Um, although it's getting smaller, we're pecking away at that sucker. And so but what I do do every single day, and I learned from my sister, um, is that I wear a tank top every day. Every day. I don't care how warm it is. I wear a tank top. And the reason why is when I wear a tank top, it's magical. Everything just smooths kind of out. My, my clothes don't cling to me. They have movement. They look much more flattering on me than if I don't. So I'm going to plan on wearing this with a tank top that's longer. And you can kind of see the tank top. The tank top will be next to my body. And then with this sweater being A-lined and flowy out, you'll see the contrast when you're actually in person, and it will appear to make me smaller than I am. This is an op optical illusion. I can't say it. I can in my head. Did you see that? So my husband said to me tonight, that I'm uber scatterbrained, and I am, and I very much apologize because I feel like I'm just going on a tangent. Um, but I think it's because I'm super busy at work, and all day is like this for me at work. All day. So, um, the place I work is fantastic. I love it. I have no complaints. Like my job. Like who I work with. You know, it's a job. And you don't love everybody that you work with, and nothing is ever perfect. But for me, this is a 
this is a really good place to be right now. But um, we're entering busy season, and my boss is gone a lot, and Tiffany Ford forwarded her phone to me, which is fine. She always does it. And then another coworker was gone, and they forwarded their phone to me. So I had two of the main people who deal with customer service, other than myself. So there's three of us that deal with customer service on the phone and via email. And I had all three of our phone calls. Plus, I have a heap of my own work that I have to do. And it was just, it wasn't really stressful. It was just chaotic. And I can't see tonight to just settle down yet. But I will eventually. Promise. Uh, which my husband will make me settle down. So that's what that is. All right. So there's still lots to show you in this basket. I'm not even halfway through. But what I'm going to go ahead and do are two things. I'm going to put a marker in this so you guys can see how much I knit this week. Hopefully, we'll be impressed, but no promises. And um, that just means there's tons more to show you next time. I did finish. Well, I'll tell you what we can look at next time. I finished two shawls. I found an old shawl that I think I showed you guys like years ago, but I, I never finished it. Finish now. And a sweater. Another sweater that's for my sister for Christmas. And it is a lot of the way done. A lot. And a towel that um, I grabbed some yarn and needles and set off and made all my own. Which that's the first thing I've ever just made. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. I've been knitting a long time. I think it's my, you know, failure thing. I don't ever want to rip back. And I never just want to pick it up and just, like, try something else. But I'm totally getting over it. And this was a major success. So it kind of spurred me to, for the reality that I can I can figure it out. I mean, I've been knitting for, like, 10 years. I can figure it out. Okay. Um... I'm sorry this episode was kind of heavy at the beginning, and it's been chaotic and totally jumbled, and yeah, but it is what it is. For me, it's a good entry back. It's good to, it's good to be thankful. I'm very thankful. Thank you to everybody who has stuck with me who has been understanding um, and kind to me during this last year. I think everybody has these moments in life, and I never once regretted these moments, my rest. I still don't. I came out on the other side, dealing with things that plagued me for years, um, a better, kinder, more patient, happier person. And part of being able to do that was knowing that when I pulled my head out of the sand and I was ready to move forward, I knew that every one of you would still be there. Because one thing about knitting and the community and handmakers and Ravelry, podcasts, uh, yarn shops, festivals, retreats, um, you're always there. You're always helping and supporting. And it's it's why I feel so at home in this community. I'm so thankful to have found it so early in my life. And although I'm quiet and I'm insanely private, I want you guys to know that I do appreciate each and every one of you. And I thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being part of my life. And I can't wait to talk to you guys again. I love each and every one of you, so knit with some love, and let's see what else I can do this week. Bye, y'all.